Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for Juneteenth through Art and History. We are very excited to be able to share this important program with you. I'm Amy Motsky Fawcett, Strategic Communication and Outreach Coordinator for the College of Arts and Letters here at ODU. And I will be talking with Ted today during this very interesting conversation. I'm so excited to start this. Um, so now I'd like to introduce our scholar in residence. Ted Ellis is an American artist and former environmental chemist based in Texas and formerly of New Orleans. Ellis is best known for his African-American themed art and styles which blend elements of folk art, naturalism, and impressionism. His work includes a rendition of Barack Obama called Obama, the 44th president, which was presented in honor of the 2009 presidential inauguration. He's acted as vice chair, artist and cultural historian for the 400 years of African American History Commission and has served as the art ambassador of the National Juneteenth Organization. This year, he is serving as the scholar in residence for the College of Arts and Letters at Old Dominion University. Although due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the in-residence part has unfortunately had to be mostly virtual. However, we are so happy that Ted will be joining us today. Ted. Hey, Amy, thank you for that um, wonderful introduction. Um, you know, last year we had a chance to um, talk a little bit about Juneteenth. Um, it's very personal for me. I have a um, 20 year um, running history with participating with Juneteenth events um, in the Galveston community. And um, so that dates way back to the, um, to the 2000s. And, uh, you know, my first engagement was at um, Carver Park in Texas City, and it was just very festive. Everybody got out. Um, they were just having a great time, a lot of barbecue uh, games and, and, and um, vendors and so forth and whatnot. And I did that for two years and, you know, and the, and the question just came, you know, you know, every June they're having this activity, what is this about? And just visiting the, um, the Galveston and, and looking at some of some of the things that they were doing and, and heading to the Rosenberg Library, I found out the real significance of, of Juneteenth. And um, in 2006, um, prior to 2006, 2005, I, I met Mr. Sam Collins. And he bought this property um, in Hitchcock, Springfield Orchards, and he decided to um, start his own um, Juneteenth program. And uh, and wow, uh, what a phenomenal program. Um, you talking about a program that was totally inclusive of everybody within that surrounding area, that community, extremely comprehensive. The oral history, the programming was exceptional. You had the reenactment from Frederick Douglass and, and Harriet Tubman. Um, you had the um, U.S. Um, colored troops um, coming there marching. You had the, 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 the gentleman playing the um, Congo drums. And, uh, and you had everyone um, who were there who had something very important to say to step up and speak up in front of everybody. So they were sharing their, their personal stories, their personal narratives around slavery to freedom um, in the United States. So we know what Juneteenth means. Um, in 1863, the proclamation, Emancipation Proclamation was issued by President Abraham Lincoln. Two years later, General Gordon Granger arrived and issued General Order Number 3 saying, cease and desist, slavery is over. And that happened in Galveston, Texas on the Strand at the, at the Union Capitol. You had over 20,000 colored troops also on the island at the same time. A, a lot of the, those truths are, 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 are coming forward now because we're having this honest discussion and dialogue about Freedom Day, Juneteenth, 1865. Um, that was the day when those who were enslaved and, and slave owners found out that, that slavery was over and ended. 1865 was also the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln and the ratification of the 13th Amendment. So, um, just a long history, um, Galveston history, is, that's a part of that American tapestry and, and history. We talk about equity, we talk about inclusion, definitely the road to freedom is so significant. And, um, and Galveston plays a unique role in that because it is the epic center and birthplace of that in 1865. And I only live um, 25 miles north of Galveston. So I thought this would be just a wonderful program to be able to share intimately and close up. There's a, a, a short video, um, if we could get that um, 
shown right quick on with Galveston and by the marker. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you exactly where the, um, the union was headquartered on the strand in Galveston, Texas. So, Hey, good morning guys. This is Ted Ellis, scholar in residence at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. We're here presently, ground zero, Galveston, Texas. Behind me, you have this phenomenal mural of absolute equality that was just recently created, sponsored by the Juneteenth Legacy Project, co-chair Samuel Collins and Ms. Sheridan Lorenz. Just a shout out to all the um, community activists and advocates here in Galveston, the collaborators and, and partners to make sure that this wonderful mural was created to recognize the importance, the historical importance of Juneteenth and Galveston, how it impacted the rest of America. Um, visual literacy right here. In the inside that building, we have a great exhibition by none other than scholar in residence Ted Ellis and a couple of other local creatives. It's the Juneteenth Freedom Project. But I want to take you guys so you can, you can see the mural. Uh, it has a integrated app that once you scan on it, you can download everyday app, scan it, and you can know the history of Juneteenth. So uh, I'm just excited. The fact that you know states are now starting to recognize and um, make it a state official holiday that that has happened in Virginia as well as the state of um, Delaware. So how about that? And I have, I have history and, and new history being made with both of those wonderful states. So we're at the Marker, um, Marker, Texas Historical Commission, Juneteenth. Got to give a big shout out to Sam Collins for making this marker happen in 2014. But I want to go ahead and, and read the official language in this historical marker um, around Juneteenth. Juneteenth, commemorated annually on June 19th. Juneteenth is the oldest known celebration of the end of slavery in the United States. The Emancipation Proclamation issued by President Abraham Lincoln on September 22nd, 1862, announced that on the first day of January, A.D., 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state in rebellion against the United States shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. So important. However, it would take the Civil War and the passage of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution to end the brutal institution of African-American slavery in the United States. After the Civil War ended in April 1865, most slaves in Texas were still unaware of their freedom. This began to change when Union troops arrived in Galveston. Major General Gordon Granger, commanding officer, District of Texas, from his headquarters in the Osterman Building, Strand and 22nd Street, right here, read General Order Number 3 on June 19, 1865. The order stated, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involved an absolute equality. Remember I told you about that? That's where the mural came from, from the General Order Number 3, of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. With this notice, Reconstruction Era Texas began. Freed African Americans observed Emancipation Day as it was the first known as early as 1866 in Galveston. As community gatherings grew across Texas, celebrations included parades, prayers, singing, and reading of the proclamation. In the mid 20th century, community celebrations gave way to more private commemorations. A reemergence of public observance held, helped Juneteenth become a state holiday in 1979. 1979, initially observed in Texas, this landmark event's legacy is evident today by the worldwide commemoration that celebrates freedom and the triumph of the human spirit. That is so important. Right here, the Juneteenth Legacy Project is a sustainable project with programs on commemorating the importance of, of Texas history and American history and sharing that globally. So I'm excited. Just recently, this Memorial Day weekend, we had Ms. Opal Lee here. She's 94 years of age. She started a walk from Fort Worth, Texas to Washington, DC to get Juneteenth recognized as a federal holiday. 
She was here with her, her three mile walk. We also had the president of the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation. Mr. Steve Williams was here. Exceptional program, exceptional recognition. The mayor of Galveston came out, joined us as other locals in the community and folks outside of Galveston came to recognize this important event. The exhibition of the Freedom, the, the Freedom, um, the Juneteenth Freedom Project will be up for one month here at the Strand Building. I implore you to come out and see this visual literacy that, that speaks so much to Juneteenth and slavery. There's a, there's a close tie between Norfolk, Virginia and Hampton and Galveston, Texas, both port cities. Boat has a rich legacy of, of American history, but also tied to slavery and the foundation and the building of America. So as Ted Ellis Scholar in Residence, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I, I look forward to telling and sharing more stories throughout the United States as it relates to American history, African American history, art, and social justice. Thank you very much. Wow. You know, it's... it's <laughs> It's hard just watching yourself talk, um, but you know one important fact when I when I what I mentioned was these port cities, and we talk about Hampton Roads, and we talk about um, the Civil War in 1861. The Contraband Act was established by um, Benjamin Butler. You had um, three enslaved to to leave from Point Sewell to head over to the Freedom Fort, which was Fort Monroe. And, uh, and subsequently, because of the, um, the Fugitive Slave Act was not applicable to the state of Virginia, that, that they were recognized as contraband. And so um, being a very astute attorney, um, General Benjamin Butler says, no, this is contraband. Uh, you know, this is our property now. And so James Townsend, Shepard Mallory, and Frank Baker, those enslaved um, individuals found freedom at Fort Monroe, the Freedom Fortress. And subsequently there, you know, afterwards, the Emancipation Proclamation, 1863, and two years later in the port city of Galveston, Texas, General Gordon Granger arrived um, and issued General Order Number no. Three that was written by Major um, Emery, who was an abolitionist as, as well. So a, a lot of unique history as it relates to to Juneteenth and, and American history. And we talk about the road to freedom. We talk about racial justice and racial equity. Um, just so critically important. Um, in 1872, I, I, a, a, another. Um, wonderful event happened. You had four individuals that decided to buy land in Houston, Texas, um, that stemmed from learning about their, their, their freedom years early. And that was Reverend Jack Yates, that was businessman Rick Brock, Richard Allen, and Reverend Elias Dibble. They bought the property that became known as Emancipation Park. And if we could um, get a chance to see that video, um, I get a chance to, um, to show you the, the location and where the historical marker is, is presented, recognizing the importance of it, Emancipation Park. Um, in Galveston, there were multiple celebrations annually. So here we are. Hello everybody, this is Ted Ellis and I'm in Houston, Texas. And I'm here at Emancipation Park, established in 1872. Matter of fact, I'll actually be doing an event virtually um, with the Cultural Center, with the Community for, for Community Engagement, talking about Juneteenth, as well as art and commerce, and how that impacts communities, particularly for our youth. But I want to read from this Texas marker about Emancipation Park. The Legacy of Emancipation Park. Emancipation Park was acquired in 1872 by previously enslaved African Americans who were in unanimous support of purchasing their own land on which to celebrate Juneteenth and to use for community development and cultural enrichment. Reverend Jack Yates, 1828 to 1897 of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. Reverend Elias Dibble, 
1811 to 1885 of Trinity Methodist Episcopal Church. Richard Brock, 1824 to 1906 of St. Paul AME Church. And Richard Allen, 1831 to 1909, civic leader and elected official, served as the core leadership. It took the whole village and area churches using effective community organizational skills, business acumen, and political savvy to help raise the money. That is so powerful. That's here in Houston, Texas, 25 miles north of Galveston, Texas. The Colored People of Harris County Festival Association was formed and trustees Richard Brock, Richard Allen, Daniel Riley, John Graham, Taylor Burke, Frank Keelan, Johnson Rice, John Sessoms, and Tillman Bush purchased this 10 acre site just outside the city limit for $800. The Colored Emancipation Park Association was formed in 1883 and later both groups continued to be active in the management of the park for decades. Emancipation Park was the only space open to Africans until 1940 and many influential organizations and institutions worked with board management to plan celebrations which included picnics, concerts, carnivals, industrial and cultural fairs, proms, military drills, dances, sporting events, movies, classes for youths and adults, which we are reviving to this day, and community meetings. The part's significance to the Houston African-American community remains as impactful today as it was in 1872. How about that? Emancipation Park is a true legacy of Texas African-American heritage and a gift to humanity for all generations. This marker was established in 2017. Marker is the property of the state of Texas. This is Ted Ellis, scholar in residence at Old Dominion University, as well as vice chair for 400 years of African-American history commission, the federal commission. So I've been an artist for a little bit over 30 years, pictorially documenting African-American history and culture. I hope to share more about the importance of African-American history as part of the tapestry of the American story. This is Ted Ellis. Peace out. Bye. So you can, you can see I was really excited. Uh, I just thought it was just a, a wonderful, intimate thing to share, being so close to all of this history as it relates to the end of slavery and freedom um, in America. Um, that whole community right now is being revitalized and um, heavy programming um, with the universities, with the, um, the local public schools, um, the community leaders, the churches. Um, um, it is a um, evolving um, community and it is one of the epic centers of, of American history. And it, it's, it's, it's a bridge for community gatherings and, and, and equity programs in that space. Um, not too far as Missouri City, and um, and you even have in, in Port um, Port Arthur and in Beaumont um, Juneteenth celebration. It's just a, it's just it's next year will be the 150th anniversary of of the park, and um, I, I suspect that they're going to have a lot of um, you know local and state and national programs centered around that activity and having that conversation um, on social justice and racial equality and how, how history can be an instrument for us to, to, to learn about you know, past errors and stake and, and, and show that, that we can do better and, and, and be better. Um, so um, you know, I think about my, my time um, as an artist and my relationship with Juneteenth that lasted more than, than 20 um, plus years. But, but a, 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 a wonderful um, opportunity happened for the 150th anniversary of Juneteenth. Um, one of my paintings, Free at Last, was the official um, piece for Juneteenth that was recognized by the um, Galveston Daily News, the, um, the local government of, of Galveston, the Galveston County, the state of Texas, and had a chance to showcase my um, Juneteenth Freedom Art Project that featured the, the Free at Last painting on the Hill on the House and the Senate side in Washington, D.C. in 2015 and had, um, you know, received wonderful proclamations from, from both Senator and Congressman John Cornyn and, 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 and 
Randy Weber, it was just a, a historical moment. Um, when, when you talk about uh, racial healing and equity in America and having folks come together and, and talk about this, this sensitive topic of, of slavery and, and inequality in America and the, and the march to freedom. So it's just such a, a, a lot of hope and a lot of opportunity moving forward um, with Juneteenth. Juneteenth is celebrated in 45 states. It's recognized as state, a state holiday in 45 states. Recently, the state of Delaware this year recognized it. Last year, the state of Virginia recognized it as a state holiday. So that is tremendous progress as, as we push forward for um, this, 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 this time of healing, of racial healing in America. And um, so Juneteenth um, is, is important. It's, it's critically important that we understand that it's, it's, it's not just a local event, that it's, it's, it, it pertains to us nationally. Um, I just can't imagine what's gonna come out of it um, moving forward. Um, my, this year, I won't be in Galveston. I'm, I'm heading to um, Wilmington, Delaware. The um, Delaware um, Library Systems commissioned me to, to do a piece for them, as well as to showcase my Juneteenth, part of my Juneteenth Freedom Exhibition. But I've also um, um, found 13 local young um, Juneteenth ambassadors, student ambassadors, to create a visual narrative to speak um, on the importance of Juneteenth and what that means to them. And we're gonna be doing this, um, this opportunity exchange with students in, in Wilmington, Delaware. So, you know, that's, that gives us an opportunity to, 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 to change minds, to inform, to educate our youth and to share in, in, in what's important about our cultural heritage and our legacy as a country moving forward and, and healing for, for equity in this space. So I um, want to tell you about the, um, the Juneteenth Legacy Project. And we talk about the importance of visual literacy, the importance of history, the importance of, of education and cultural sharing and equity. I think this is a phenomenal project that speaks to how we could use our talents and our resources and our means to build better communities. This, um, this, this mural, absolute equality mural was created by, by I wanna say five um, creatives, um, um, Sam Collins, who is one of the co-chairs, as well as um, Ms. Um, Sheridan Lorenz, who's, who's part and soul is the Mitchell Foundation. And um, they've taken up the charge and responsibility to understand the importance, not only on environmental issues, but on social issues. And so you have the largest erected mural relates to, to Juneteenth and freedom in the country, possibly the world, I think the world. And, and when, you, when, you, when you walk and you visit to Galveston and you see that mural and the impact that it makes with everyone who comes and visit, it's a positive outcome. And so um, I wanna go ahead and, and introduce Mr. Sam Collins in this video. Um, Sam will say a few things about himself and he'll walk you through the importance of, of the mural Absolute Equality as well as the Juneteenth Freedom Exhibition that's inside the Strand Building. So, um, and then we'll, we'll have a few questions afterwards. Hey guys, this is Ted Ellis, scholar in residence from Old Dominion University. I have a treat for you here in Galveston, Texas we have Mr. Sam Collins, historian here. He'll give you some background information about himself, about the project that's going on for Juneteenth and his time and commitment over the years. Sam, it's your floor. Yes, my name is Samuel Collins III. I'm a certified tourism ambassador here in Galveston, Texas. Also on the board with the National Trust for Historic Preservation Board of Advisors. I've done some work with the Texas Historical Commission in Galveston County. Uh, historical commission and even a lifetime member of the Hitchcock Heritage Society. So from small towns with a few thousand to a national board are very active in the preservation and history community. We're here at the Juneteenth Legacy Project headquarters in the Neal Cultural Center office. Uh, we have an exhibit up uh, sharing more of the African-American history and experience here in America. Uh, the project was brought together uh, with myself and Sheridan Lorenz, who is the co-chair of the Juneteenth Legacy Project. When we decided to uh, 
place a mural on the outside of the building uh, where the Osterman building once stood on the corner. When the Osterman building was torn down after Hurricane Carla, it exposed the east wall of the old Galveston Square. Uh, we were able to place a Juneteenth marker at that corner in 2014. On June 19, 2014, it went in the ground. We had our program on June 21st. So after uh, passing this intersection many times, I saw that this blank wall created an opportunity for a storytelling space to expand the narrative of Juneteenth. The National Trust has a national campaign to tell the full story and to teach the full history. So when we think about major port cities like uh, Norfolk, uh, Hampton Roads, and Galveston, these are uh, port cities where many individuals from around the world were able to arrive at, at various times, of course, we know being a part of the transatlantic slave trade and Galveston actually being an illegal slave port because uh, slavery had been outlawed in 1808, but they continued to bring Africans in through the Gulf uh, up until really the end of the Civil War. So Galveston has a deep connection to this history of uh, uh, importation of the enslaved people. So here, uh, we have an exhibit up uh, where we've worked with uh, youth in the community uh, for community engagement. The public art project uh, intention is to reimagine uh, monuments and memorials and public spaces as we transform this corner, southwest corner of 22nd and Strand, to an outdoor classroom. So in addition to the outdoor classroom, what you see is kind of an icing on the cake. Inside the building, inside the cake are the other ingredients that tell more of the story. So we can pass through one painting here free at last. It started in 2006 at one of the very first Juneteenth celebrations we held at Stringfellow Archers in Hitchcock, Texas, a property that me and my family own. One of the things that we did here, uh, there is community uh, artist, uh, so we're so thankful for him. Uh, allowing us to have some of this art here in the Juneteenth Legacy Project headquarters. We're going to go back over here toward the Absolute Equality mural, the mock-up, just to share with you a little bit of the history here. So this is the model that was done by the artist before they did the uh, mural on the outside. We have the almond sculpture that dates back to 1100. Esteban Nico uh, Esteban uh, Mustafa was first shipwrecked here in Galveston in 1528. So we have the 1619 date, but we also have here in Galveston the 1528 date. So we're coming up on almost 500 years. We have the Africans that were sold by other Africans. You got Harriet Tubman, the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad in Texas ran to Mexico, not north of Canada, but we needed an iconic figure of female. Abraham Lincoln, and don't forget the United States Colored Troops. These were the men that helped save the Union. So they were there to help assist the Union when they were losing at Appomattox. The USCT came across the hill in quick time, one uh, soldier wrote, and it didn't matter the color of the faces of the men. They were there to relieve them, and he was so glad to see their cold black faces and the courage that they presented. So after defeating uh, Lee at Appomattox, they were then ordered to Texas. So Gordon Ranger comes to Texas, with 75% of the soldiers being the United States Colored Troops. So three out of the four men in blue uniforms would have been in black bodies. So the telegraph that went out from Galveston on June 20th, 1865, imprinted in many newspaper reports, states that Galveston is now occupied by colored troops. So this is part of our American story. These freedom fighters, these patriots, helped to save the Union. We have an iconic figure of Hotel Galvez here in Galveston and the continued march toward absolute equality. And uh, so the books that are listed uh, across the top, these are our weapons today. Information in books. Uh, uh, we need to read more and be more informed. So uh, many of these uh, topics you may not find in your regular classrooms, but these are the books and stories that we need to hear. During Reconstruction, just as an example, Men like George T. Ruby uh, was one of the state senators elected here in Galveston to represent the area and push for public education. If it wasn't for men like George T. Ruby and Matthew Gaines, we wouldn't have universities like Prairie View A&M University and Texas A&M University. These were the black legislators that pushed for public education. 
And of course, this is a special painting here to me with the contraband of war. Uh, they ran for their freedom on May 23rd, 1861, which May 23rd is also her birthday. So this is uniquely tied. I, I, I love this, uh, this story of these men that did not wait to be rescued, but they took up and with their feet, they voted themselves to freedom. And then once they became free, many individuals joined the Union Army uh, and, and helped to fight for the freedom of others. So Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation not only weakened the South, but it helped to strengthen the Union as these individuals came across. So we have another portrait of Butler. His decision to uh, uh, classify them as contraband uh, helped the Union to get stronger. And then, of course, Gordon Green. Youth in Delaware to do some paintings and bring them back to Texas. Uh, you saw some of the uh, artwork on the wall by Mr. Ellis. This is a Stringfellow Orchard property, and this is a, a, a slave quarters on Egypt plantation uh, here in Texas. So this, these are the stories that uh, for too long have been ignored, but now we're working to expand. We have Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King, and William Lord Garrison. So these are important, iconic figures in our, in our history and then current events. Uh, Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor, uh, Colin Kaepernick, uh, Trayvon Martin, and, and just to continue to fight to be recognized as men and women and equal rights for all. And of course, uh, the legend and, and, and just, I mean, it's not enough words to describe the, the sacrifice and the, and the work that was done by John Lewis. Uh, we have the Plessy versus Ferguson, and then, uh, a tribute to New Orleans. Uh, so, uh, Rosa Parks. And one of the things about this church many individuals don't realize, Avenue L was first established in 1840. So we're talking about 25 years before Juneteenth, 25 years before the end of enslavement. This is not the original building, but the church was first organized and that makes it older than the state of Texas. And when I say that, uh, the date that I'm, I'm referencing is that December 29th, 1845, is when Texas joined the Union. Because in 1836, Texas had won its independence from Mexico and became an independent nation. And they did not join the Union until December 29th, 1845. So Avenue L being originally formed in 1840, that makes that first black church in the state of Texas actually older than the state of Texas. So it, it was the first uh, uh, black church in the state and the first black Baptist. 1848, Reedy Chapel was established and Reedy Chapel was unique to different territories at different times. But what, what we need to do is remember that uh, until we're all free, uh, none of us are free. So we must remember to uh, celebrate this, this story and this history. So we're gonna end where we began, uh, back at free at last. So this is, again, the story of the family uh, finally having an opportunity to pursue their own goals after they received freedom in 1865. The descendants of the enslaved have come back to buy the home uh, that was once owned by a Confederate soldier, not as a means of we took something away from you, but if given the opportunity to have absolute equality, to live in an environment where no hurdles or barriers are placed in front of them, they too can pursue their goals to buy a home, uh, to live freely, to establish a family. So you have a father and mother with children. You have the story uh, telling in the quilt. You have the shape of Texas. You have the roots in the tree. You have the communication with the drums. You have allegiance to country by the home enslaved, the USCT on the top of the house protecting the cross on the hill for faith, Frederick Douglass, uh, Harriet Tubman. And you just have a picture of uh, community, America, family, faith, uh, fellowship with one another, and freedom. So we want you to come to Galveston, Texas to visit the Juneteenth Legacy. So there you have it. That was Mr. Sam Collins, National Historical Trust member, um, part of the um, Texas Historical um, Commission as, as well, talking about the importance of the project, the Juneteenth Legacy Project, the importance of Juneteenth, how it impacts communities. Um, Sam has, has been, a, been a friend and a colleague for, for close to 20 plus years. And uh, 
we've partnered on bringing programs um, to schools and to communities, um, um, partnerships with churches and organizations about, you know, uh, freedom and equity and what Juneteenth means to, um, to America, particularly African-Americans. Um, um, that's that quote by um, Frederick Douglass, what to the American slave is the 4th of July. And when we talk about, you know, equity and freedom in this space and not pay attention to those who were enslaved. So that date in um, um, June 19, 1865 is so critically important that we are mindful and reminded that, that, that we are to, we're charged with the responsibility for racial justice and equality in, a, in America. That's an ongoing um, challenge for us. And we have to look at it through policy and through law and how it affects communities. But I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so faithful and, and excited about the potential for, 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 for better race relationships moving forward as Galveston um, being a, an example, a present day example of it, because um, last year we talked about, you know, things that, that, that challenge that space of racial equality when we talk about class and social stratification. And I saw all of those elements coming together on this major project, this um, Juneteenth legacy project. Uh, means, um, academic means, um, um, community um, means, um, financial means, um, making a platform to, to, to speak, to heal, you know, communities that have been wounded um, by erecting this, this mural of equality and racial justice, um, taking ownership in a position to say that we can do better, and um, it's 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 a marvel. Um, I um, ran down, drove down, and run to Emancipation Park after I um, spent some time in Galveston. And Miss Lucy Bremont, who's the executive director, she's excited about the programming that's that's coming through um, through Emancipation Park and how that's going to impact communities as they as they gather in this space. You know having conversation, community conversation, having academic conversations at institutions inside of that community. You definitely have Texas Southern University and, and, and Rice University. Prairie View is down the road, but on 290, but all St. Thomas University, all having this space um, and discussion about racial equality, importance of Juneteenth, that's part of the American story. So when we bridge and we look beyond the borders and confines of Texas, I look at the Commonwealth of Virginia and, and, and how that plays a specific role um, in, in the road toward freedom and equality in, in America. And, and, and being part of a, a wonderful institution, Old Dominion University, that's, that's dedicated to diversity, inclusion, and equity, and having this platform, um, it's just amazing. When, when we come together and, and with a sense of urgency and purpose and leveraging our, our passion and being committed for doing the right thing, what, what can happen? Um, even in this small space of gathering this Zoom and saying, Amy, you know, I, I like to expand a, a, my, my personal narrative around Juneteenth and how I've, I've been involved in it. I mean, imagine in 2015 going up to Washington, D.C. on the state capitol and saying, you know, my history matters as part of that American story. Juneteenth matters. And, 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 and politicians, you know, pausing and says it does. And, and, and when Senator um, John Corning gave us that opportunity and Congressman Randy Weber gave us that opportunity on both the House and the Senate side, to say that African-American history is important. And every year in Galveston for the ceremony of the commemoration and recognition of Juneteenth, those politicians are, are, are right there. And, 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 and this will be another learned moment for us to push forward so that we could be better citizens, um, we could be uh, better patriots, uh, that we could stand um, democratically together and, and recognize that, that we don't have to be divisive in this space, um, that we could learn from each other and we can, and we can live cooperatively in, in this space. So there's a sense of urgency for us to continue to push forward um, in other areas of the country. It definitely, it definitely happened in Hampton Roads. 
when, um, when those three enslaved Africans arrived from Point Sewell to Freedom Fortress and, 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 and the contraband camps were, were, were established. In less than what I wanna say a month or two months, you had over 6,000 um, enslaved um, um, individuals found freedom at, at, at Freedom Fortress in, in Fort Monroe. Um, amazing that to push forward, and I don't know how many miles that is between Hampton Roads and Galveston, Texas, that General Gordon Granger, members of the um, 29th and 35th Infantry Colored Troops made their way through Charleston, through, through, the, through the state of Louisiana, onward to, um, to Texas to say cease and desist. Slavery is over. There's equity for everybody. Freedom is here now. And uh, we hold to the ideals of the Declaration of Independence, to the ideals of the Emancipation and Proclamation, to, to the laws that establish and govern the land in which we live is so critically important. So um, um, there's one thing that I want to leave you with, and I just thought this was just bridging communities, um, you know, um, showing that, that, that communities can, can impact. There's a, a proclamation issued by the uh, city of Galveston that, 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 that speaks to the, the commitment of Old Dominion University and the state of Virginia as it relates to Juneteenth and freedom in America. So two pieces I'll, I'll just read and it's, um, whereas that the governor Ralph Northam of the Commonwealth of Virginia recognized and passed into law Juneteenth as the official state holiday and Whereas Old Dominion University recognizes the historical importance of Juneteenth, creating academic programming to increase the awareness of Juneteenth for its students, faculty, and community by incorporating the art of Ted Ellis Me that is so vividly provides a visual narrative of the events of slavery and freedom in America. Um, and a little bit more, therefore I do hereby extend this certificate of recognition to Old Dominion University in Hampton Roads, Virginia, as well as the state of Virginia for encouraging all citizens to join in the continued celebration and commemoration of Juneteenth, June 19, 2021. Over 45 states now have a state holiday. Listen, we, we, we gotta be encouraged. With, with all the challenges that we have in this space, you know, we're pushing it forward. We, we understand that everyone matters, that equality matters, that freedom matters. And um, so as we champion for, to improve um, the efforts of our social justice campaigns, I want to um, thank everyone for, for, for giving me this opportunity to, 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 to provide an opportunity for enlightenment. Now, we're gonna have um, a, a time and a moment for questions and answers. And so, um, so I'm here to, to be able to hopefully address and, and, and give um, information that will be helpful. Well, Ted, thank you so much for doing that and recording those videos. And please thank Mr. Collins for making that video, especially for us, because you know I just find it so amazing that we're getting this history here in Virginia directly from Galveston, you know, that we're hearing from you and we have this opportunity. Um, it's been so interesting. And I did want to just really quickly go back to the poll that I think many of you participated in in the beginning. And if you didn't um, get the chance to do that, that's okay. But, um, or if you came in a little bit late, because I saw a few people joined after the poll, um, we just asked a question about when did you first learn about the Juneteenth holiday and how did you learn about it? Um, and Ted, you know, maybe you're not surprised, but I was surprised to see that the majority of answers said people had learned about Juneteenth more than 20 years ago, which, you know, to be totally honest, and as Mr. Collins said during his talk, it's not something that you really learn widely about in education. I, I don't think I was ever taught it during my school years. I know, Ted, we talked about you weren't taught it. And so, right. you know, maybe maybe we just happened to go to schools that didn't talk about it and everybody else did and we just missed out on that conversation, I don't know. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting. And then I was hoping if people wanted to, um, that they could maybe just send in a little bit of information if they wanted to use 
the Q and A function just to tell some stories of Juneteenth because I know Ted, you told your story of kind of how you came across Juneteenth, how you learned about it, um, and. Also, just to talk about that second question of how did you learn about it? Um, I was really enthused, honestly, as a former reporter to see a lot of people say they learned about it from local news because that's how I learned about it when I was a reporter. Um, I actually was sent out to cover a story about Juneteenth at a living history museum. And it probably had to be you know, 15 years ago now, I guess. Um, and they were trying to incorporate more of the voices of enslaved people who had worked on this site into their history. And so they held a Juneteenth event for the first time that year. And of course, being a reporter, I had so many questions. I was like, what is Juneteenth? Why are you celebrating? What, what is this for? Why is it called this? Who started it? You know, just of course doing the reporter thing and, and probably annoying them, but they were very sweet. Um, and so of course that leads me back to saying, I'm so enthused to hear that people learned about it from local news. Um, and so I was hoping to, if people wanted to share some of that, you know, how did you learn about Juneteenth and, you know, all of that kind of stuff as we were, um, you know, as we're doing the Q and A. So, you know, just just a couple of things as you were talking, you know, I, you, those of you watching probably don't know, but Ted and I have talked about Juneteenth so much lately. <laughs> we have had so many conversations at, over the past year and a half, because as he mentioned earlier, he celebrated Juneteenth with us last year, which was the first time it was a statewide celebration here in Virginia. And um, we did a virtual tour of his amazing exhibit that was here at ODU um, yes. at the time with some of, I think some of the artwork you had in that exhibition was also here at ODU yes, or? Yeah, um, well, definitely okay. the contraband. I thought I recognized yeah, yeah. some of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I'm sure nice. if you came to see it, um, those of you who were there for it would have recognized some of those paintings as well. Um, so, but I don't want to take up too much of our time because I know that, you know, we don't want to get behind and it looks like we do have questions coming oh, I saw, in. So I saw just, a lot of great questions in the um, Q&A. Yeah. Some of my kids. And answer. so I don't want to get, yeah, I don't want to take up anyone's time. I just, um, you know, wanted to throw that out there. If anyone wanted to share their Juneteenth experiences um, or how they, you know, any of that information, I was just, you know, considering our conversations that neither of us learned about it as very young people are in school, you know, I just, I was so fascinated by those answers and kind of like, who are these people who learned about it 20 years ago? How did they do that? Um, but Again, not trying to take up too much of the Q&A time. Um, I wanted to go ahead and introduce Mariah Johnson, who is a graduate student here at Old Dominion University. She's in Lifespan and Digital Communication. If you joined us for last month's talk with Ted, uh, she was our moderator. That was wonderful. Yeah, um, we had such a great job. time last month talking about yeah. artivism. And if you missed that, you can go ahead and find it on the College of Arts and Letters YouTube channel, which is also where we will post this event later. Um, um, this, I believe, is also streaming to our Facebook. So if you missed a part of it, or if you want to share it with somebody, um, they it will be available. So Mariah, I'm going to let you go ahead and take it away. Um, thank you both so much. Thanks, Amy. Hello. So the first question is from Carl Jackson. When and where was the first Juneteenth in Virginia, if you know? So, so I don't, you know, and I was in the Q and A, um, even I, I saw the gentleman asked about, you know, the statewide activities in, in Louisiana. You know, I, I mentioned, I learned about Juneteenth when I actually got to Texas. Um, um, but, but if, if I, if I could recall, we used to Joe Brown Park in New Orleans East every June, they would have a festive activity, but nothing was mentioned about Juneteenth and, and, and slavery you know, that was very specific that you understood why you were there. Um, you know, not until I, I you know, when I, when, I, when I participated in Texas City at Carver Park, and I just, you know, it was, it was primarily African-Americans in this space. It was Jubilee, it was discussions. And I mean, you know, we, we had a great picnic and a great time. And if you read some of the, um, the old historical um, literature, provenance and stuff, it talks about parades and picnics and everything else but not until we did that real comprehensive programming at Stringfellow Orchards with Sam Collins that, that I, I really started you know, digging my teeth in it, learning more about Juneteenth, about the Freedom Tree in Missouri City, how they celebrated Juneteenth, Emancipation Park. I said, whoa, this is, this is real heavy because 
you know, freedom for me, for the most part, happened, you know, 1776, you know, 4th of July. And so, and I thought about it, and it makes you pause when you think about, you know, those who were enslaved and those who were liberated, well, we didn't have total freedom. And that has been the push for that conversation with Juneteenth part of American history, and, and that's where we are. And so um, Dr. Ron Myers, he's, he's deceased now, but there's a lot of information um, on, 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 on the website, the, the National Observance um, Juneteenth Foundation, um, that talks about their advocacy and activism on getting Juneteenth recognized as a federal holiday, but also about the participatory programs they have in the, in the multiple um, states throughout the, throughout the country. So oh, sorry, really quickly, I wanted to jump in because of course, um, when I saw that question, I decided to try to look it up. And I don't know if this counts as the first Juneteenth celebration, but I did find that as early as 1905, um, people in Richmond were actually celebrating Emancipation Day. So I just, I don't know if we want to count that, but that's what I found online. And of course, well, being from Richmond, I had to call out my hometown for, um, you know, being well, part of that. And so when, when you talk about the progression and, 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 and the story and the narrative, it's a continuation. It's just not, you know, Galveston. So it led up to Galveston about being a last, but everybody had the Emancipation Day the Freedom Day. Charleston had a big celebration for the emancipation. And it's, you know, it's well documented with all the colored troops that were that were established and pronounced in, in Charleston. And you think about that as, as they migrated and moved forward with those, with the with the general orders, that it touched all the other southern cities. But it was it was a a um, it was um, sort of governed by their their, their time and journey. So, you know, it was chronologically, you, you, we didn't they didn't have mass communication the way they had it now. You know, it was almost horse and buggy and, 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 and pretty much word of mouth. And so that's how folks established a, a means of, of gathering the information. And so these emancipation days continue. They were programmatic. And, um, and now you have, a, you have a resurgence around that that's happening nationally. Uh, another question that we had was, there have been conversations on social media about regionality and the erasure of Juneteenth's Black and Southern, specifically Texan roots. How do you think Juneteenth will be impacted by its widespread acceptance by other spaces, by other states and spaces? And do you think the commodification of this holiday can lead to the erasure of its roots? No, I don't. I think what it what it'll do it'll it'll bring more awareness, particularly when you have academic institutions involved in it, cultural institutions, um, you know, community spaces and and and, and advocates who who it's it's dear, you know, it's dear to them. It's it's it they're very passionate and purposed in that space. Is that the message will will continue to breathe it and 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 get out there? Um, I think that's what happened when when. Early on, you know, you know, what was Juneteenth? Is it just a picnic? No, it's more than that. And so, in that Galveston space, I'm, I'll use Galveston as an example. In the surrounding areas, there's been more content, more historical uh, programming. The Texas Historical um, um, Foundation, uh, Historical Commission, the National Historical Trust. These are these are federal partners. The the National uh, Park Services that has sponsored the feasibility study for the uh, Emancipation Trail that Sheila Jackson Lee, you know, with the House Resolution, I think is 434. So as, as the word continues to get out, yeah, you, you're, gonna you're gonna have the commodification of it, um, the monetization of, of culture. It, it has always run that kind of course here in America. Uh, but, but, but I think it's a, it's a good thing because now, you know, you get to, you sort of like, you know, when you defend your, 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 your thesis statement or something like that, you know, uh, you get to say why Juneteenth, what is Juneteenth about? Uh, what, what's the history surrounding Juneteenth in, in, in those spaces? And so you get a chance to have a voice and, and I, I think it's, 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 it's going to be okay. And we have time for three more questions. So how will you be celebrating with your family and do you have any Juneteenth traditions? 
So typically, typically in my space, I'm either in, in Galveston, Houston, or Missouri City, um, in, in, in the local space. This year, I get an opportunity. I was invited very early um, by the, um, the, the Wilmington, Delaware Library um, um, system to come and present part of my Juneteenth exhibition, as well as I was commissioned to do a piece for the library. So that's the city of Delaware um, and the library. So I get to impact a different community as, a, as, a, as, a, as an art ambassador centered around the importance of, of, of Juneteenth. And typically that has been my space for, uh, for, for, for Juneteenth. You know, it's, I, I've personally been involved for, for close to 20 years on the programmatic side of it. I would say the last 10 years, you know, and campaigning for the, for the urgency of, of racial equity and equality in America and why Juneteenth is critically important. And so, um, but there's others who have, have, have put the time in longer than I have, Ms. Naomi Carrier, um, who's a cultural activist um, that has done phenomenal work in the, in the, in the, in the Houston community and, and, and throughout, you know, and certainly other folks, um, you know, Dr. Ron Myers, you know, he's deceased now, but I mean, that was his, his life work and, and legacy and leaving the uh, National Juneteenth Observance Foundations for others to carry that torch forward. So first I wanted to, cause I think this could be answered quickly and I wanna make time for Darren's question. Um, first we have, will the Wilmington event be virtual, in-person or hybrid? So I do know it's gonna be in person. I will, I will ask the executive director if they're gonna film it and, um, and, and maybe stream it live. That's a, that's a great, uh, great question. Um, that, and I know part of the answer. I don't know the whole answer to, to that, but okay. yeah, I, I, will, I will see and ask, yes. And the last question before we wrap up, cause I do wanna make sure we're on time. Are there any more historical connections between Hampton Roads, Virginia and Galveston, Texas? Oh, th there's, there's a plethora of, of connections. Um, when you talk about um, um, the, the Rosenberg libraries, I mean, you go through their archives. You, there are a lot of folks from Hampton Roads that, that, that moved to um, Galveston, Texas and, and vice versa. You know, that's, a, that's another wonderful um, story for another time on doing the research and the presentation of that. But, um, you know, th those, those people of color have, have, have roots in Virginia, um, um, those who were enslaved, uh, and, and, and those who, 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 were, who were the abolitionists fighting and those who were not have close ties between these, those, those two port cities when you talk about Hampton Roads and, um, and Galveston, Texas. Um, it's just, um, you know, it's just a part of it, but it's, it's, it's more local researchers, um, cultural archivists, um, and, um, and educators get involved in that. And, and, and museums, you will find more treasured stories surfacing and, 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 and being found. And that's pretty much sort of what I do too as well as an artist, yeah. One more question. Well, thank you, Mariah, for hosting oh. our Q&A. And yeah. are we doing one more or is this the last one? I'm sorry. We are out of time. Oh, wow. So look, trivia, there's over oh. 200, there's 200 historical markers God. in Galveston, Texas. So. Yeah. Sorry, can you say your trivia question again? So there's over 200 historical markers in Galveston, Texas. I thought that was, re that was remarkable. You know, uh, typically that's, that's sort of one of my things whenever I travel, I try to get to a historical marker, you know, to, 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 to learn that history and say, wow, you know, I've been there, done that. And, uh, uh, you know, um, West of New Orleans was the largest slave market um, in the South. That was in Galveston, Texas. And it was right across from the, the Osterman building um, on a strand where we had the exhibition at. I mean, it's just, just, a, just remarkable history. You know, I, you know, I just, I learned that um, some months back. So what I'm hearing is a future YouTube series going to all the markers in Galveston. Is that what I'm hearing? Potentially, but, but you know, it's, it's, 
Well, Mariah, if you help me with that, yes. But I, I was thinking about, you know, the possibility of, of the continuation of this and this program, you know, having a journey to all the other port cities and tying, and tying it into Hampton Roads and what that looks like. So, you know, that visit to, um, to Charleston, to Mobile, to Boston and places like that, what does that look like in tying our narratives and our stories together? You know, the fabric of it all. And, uh, and making sense of it. Typically, we sort of sometimes siloed stuff. You know, um, you know, New Orleans will just own Congo Square. And it's like, come on, guys, you knew something about Juneteenth. Why well, don't know about Juneteenth? Um, and, and so, you know, you know, we tell a story of Hampton Roads, but we don't tell the other piece of it that connects to it. And, and, and I think we can, we can do better like that. And we can all take ownership in it. And, we can, and, and when we're comfortable in that space, we become become better um, community partners and builders, you know, moving forward and, and sharing our culture and our history because we, we, we have some bumps and bruises uh, because of slavery. And we, gotta, we, we just got to get beyond so that we can enjoy life and fulfillment. That's, that's, that's the importance of it all. Yes. And speaking of enjoying life and fulfillment, it is 402. We thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Please stay tuned for more works of Ted Ellis, and we're definitely going to be planning more stuff. We want to utilize our scholar in residence as much as possible. So please stay tuned for the next event that we'll be having. Um, definitely celebrate Juneteenth. We welcome everybody celebrating Juneteenth. Take pictures and tag us, ODU Arts Lab, on Instagram. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in.